Hey guys, what I've got here is another piece of the puzzle, another essential component in my upcoming PC build for 2021. So in my last video, we looked at the amazing AMD Ryzen 9 5950X CPU, 16 cores of amazingness. And we also looked at, if I can get it, the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master. And I'm still not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but this does look like a very good board. So in this video, I want to show you what you see. The Corsair AX1000 High Performance ATX Power Supply. Part, uh, part of Corsair's AX series. And you can see that it's a 1000 watt supply, titanium, and it comes with a 10 year guarantee. Now, I will test this in a future video and I'll, I'll speak about noise levels and you know how the fan works and different things. But in this video, I want to unbox it, show you the cables, but I also want to talk about specs, talk about features, and I also want to touch upon why I've actually chosen this particular power supply and kind of talk generally as well as to what to look for. So ATX power supply, kind of straightforward there. ATX is the standard power supply size. You can buy small form factor power supplies, but unless you're building a small PC, you're better going for ATX. And... I'd say that the main things to look at, because ATX is kind of the standard size for power supplies, the main things that you'll be looking at is how many watts do you need and what rating should you buy? And there's multiple ratings for this. And titanium is the best, but it's also the most expensive. And if you go for a lower rating, it will save you money. But, you know, th there are some compromises for that. So as far as watts go, I'll talk about that first. The key thing here is to decide what CPU and motherboard and components that you're going to use in advance. And you'll see a lot of discussions online about this. People saying you only need a 600 watt supply, you only need 700, you only need 800. It really comes down to you and what you're actually going to be using. So what I recommend is using one of the many power supply calculators out there and just plugging some figures in there. In fact, use a few, use a few, open up a few, Enter your CPU, your motherboard, your GPU, enter your fans, the number of hard drives you're going to use, enter all of them, and you might get slightly different results between the different calculators, but that's all good. You really want to work out what you're going to get. Now, a good way to do that is to just enter your components on PC Part Picker. That will automatically give you an estimate. But what you'll see is a result where it will say something like, we estimate you will use 650 watts. We recommend a 750 watt supply. But you'll see a lot of recommend recommendations from different people. I really think it's it's kind of black and white, really, as far as just plan ahead as to what you're going to be using. So the reason I went for a 1000 watt supply is that if you look at the 3080 and 3090, the higher end of the NVIDIA 30 series graphics cards, they all recommend 750 watt or 850 watt power supplies at a minimum. And I guess I could have got away for, you know, with 850 watts, but... I might be overclocking your graphics card. I might overclock the CPU, perhaps the memory. I don't know. And I'm also going to be adding my capture card and my Thunderbolt 3 card. So I wanted more room at the top. I wanted a little bit extra voltage there if I need it. And that's why I went for 1000 watts. The bigger argument that you will see online is not about wattage. It's about this rating system. And if you don't believe me, guys, go online, search about power supply ratings, and you'll see the most heat, heated discussions online, and I'm sure someone gets compared to Hitler at one point. But this is the power supply rating system, and you can see it goes from 80 plus through bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and titanium. Titanium's the best, also the most expensive thing. That's basically how it goes. It gets better as the ratings go from left to right, but it does get more expensive. And one of the key things... Uh, to, to note here is really efficiency. The efficiency rating will be different between these different uh, power supplies as far as bronze against gold, etc. And, you know, just take, for example, bronze at 20% load, there'll be 82% efficiency, which means 18% is wasted, just wasted energy. Whereas with titanium, it would be 90%. Going up to 100%, bronze, you're still losing 18%. With, with titanium, you're only losing 6%. Now, the big argument online is whether it's worth upgrading to these higher supplies because you might pay a lot more to get those. And here's an example. If you go to the Corsair website, and I'll show you this in a second because I've actually bought one today. <laughs> I've bought this particular one. But if you go to the Corsair website and just find the wattage of 
the power supply that you're going to buy. And you can do this with any, you know, for any company, obviously. But say you pick 850 watts, you'll see different options. You'll see gold. Um, so for example, there's 80 plus, there's gold, there's platinum, uh, and there's another platinum. And you can see it goes from 130 pounds up to 180 pounds. A lot of people will say it's not worth upgrading to those more expensive ones because you'll never see a return for your money. And in many situations, they're right. So efficiency is all down to the efficiency curve. And you can see, you know, basically this has got high efficiency, all levels, low load, high load. The reason people say not to go for those uh, more expensive ratings, the more expensive platinum and titanium power supplies is because you'll never get your investment back. You'll pay 50 or 100 pounds more or 100 dollars more, but you'll never actually lose that in electricity. So for me, it was worth upgrading because I've got my computer on every single day of the week. And I might not get the return right away, but over 10 years, yes, I would save money with it. There's, there are some other things to take into account as well. I think Corsair actually give you a 10 year guarantee with all warranties, uh, with all power supplies. Other companies might give you a better warranty with the higher price plans, uh, the higher price power supply, sorry. Whereas with the lower end ones, you might only get two years or five years or, or something like that. But the other thing is um, the actual quality of the components. And you can see here, silent operation at low and medium loads. The titanium power supplies tend to have better capacitors and they, they, they can normally handle heavier loads at a lower noise level. And you can see here, this has got a zero uh, RPM fan up to 40 degrees load. So up to 400 watts here, it shows you that the fans aren't kicking in and then the fan will kick in and it will cool things down. I don't want to have a massive discussion about this really in this video because I know we could talk about this for hours, but just bear in mind that there are, you know, a few different ways to do this. I've, I went for titanium for, for the better high quality uh, components and because of re reliability and for the efficiency curve because my computer is going to be on so goddamn long. Right, let's go on to the actual... PSU. Why did I buy this PSU? Well, it's it's a popular model. It really is a popular model. It's been out for years and there's a lot of reasons to like this. You can see it retails at £230 here in the UK. It's sold on Amazon at the same price, but that was not available when I actually bought it. And I bought it through Corsair. Now, I don't normally buy components through the official website, but I must admit I was very, very impressed. I ordered this at four in the morning Seven in the morning, it was shipped and I got it the next day. Packaging was great. Really can't complain. I would definitely buy from them again. So if you scroll down, you can see superior voltage regulation, 100% Japanese, 105 degrees capacitors. There's that zero RPM fan I was talking about. 135 millimeter cooling fan and modular cables. This is something else to look for, but I would always recommend going for a semi-modular or ideally modular cable system with your power supply because what it means is that if the power uh, supply cables are damaged in any way you can switch them out or you can change them for better cables it's just better long term also you can change the side from black to red to blue to white or yeah there's a few different options there by the looks of it so yes that's uh, the power supply and as far as why i've went for this particular model uh, i really didn't have much choice now, I'm not saying I wouldn't have bought this one anyway, but normally what I would do is look at lots of reviews and I would compare them and I would say, well, this one is better, this one's cheaper, blah, blah, blah. I didn't have that option. I decided that I wanted a 1000 watt titanium power supply and nothing was in stock, nothing. And if you don't believe me, look on computing websites in the UK. This is high to low 1000 watt plus supplies. Pre-order, pre-order, due out of stock, blah, blah, blah. They're just not in stock. They're just not in stock. So I went for the power supply that was in stock and it was this one. But I'm not disappointed. This is a high quality premium build. And it, if you look at the side here, in fact, if I get it around the right way, um, you can see what's in the box from an accessory point of view. You get the one 24 pin ATX cable. There's two eight pin cables, four, four plus four. There's eight six plus two eight pin cables. And then there's eight SATA connectors, another eight SATA connectors, slightly different there. Uh, eight peripheral connectors, four pin for fans and different things. And then there's one floppy adapter. Now, 
again, just generally speaking, and it's the same with this, but you can replace those cables if you want. There's a, a, a growing RGB custom cable market growing, but if you do buy custom cables, just make sure you get the one that supports your power supply because you need to get one that actually works with your particular power supply. So without further ado, let's actually open this box and we'll check out the Corsair AX1000. So the wrapper is off and I was a little bit perplexed at first because it, it seems that you should open it that way, but it's actually from the side. It's from the side, that's how you open it. And then this will open up. There we go, like that. And here we go. And this is quite big, actually, quite a big box. Okay, so these are the plates, red, white, and blue. Quite nice, actually. I, I like that they've included that. There's obviously some other parts in there as well, but I'll put that to the side for now. We've got the UK 3 point plug. And all the accessories here. And then we've got the power supply itself. So let's get that open. Okay, so this is the power supply. And... Yeah, and I know that power supplies aren't the most exciting things to look at, but it, look, it does look good. It does look good. And I was right earlier, you do get this in black because black is the default color, and then you change it to red, white, or blue. So you've got the 135 millimeter fan on top, all the connectors at the back, and here we've got the power supply socket, and we've got the on and off switch, and there's a button, which if you can see it here, it says for the zero RPM fan mode. So that's actually a button. And of course here, logo is there. So at the back, we've got 24 pin ATX. We've got another eight pin connector there. We've got six, six plus two and four by four CPU ports here as well. So this is for your graphics cards, CPU, etc. And then you've got all your SATA connectors, all your six pin connectors here at the left. So the six, six pins, we have 24 pin, eight pin, and then six, eight pin. So pretty standard affair. If you've owned a 1000 watt supply, you'll, you'll know what you're in for. So Velcro, Velcro ties there. There's a couple of screws there and there's a couple of cable ties. So this is really nice. This is really nice what they've done here. They've got all the cables here, but they've put it into a little bag that you roll up. This is much better than what I've had before. My previous power supply was the EVGA T2. Great power supply, but all the cables were pretty much just thrown in the box. And whenever you went back to the box to get another cable, it was a little bit of a mess. But what they've done is organize this really, really well. Okay, I've stretched the plug out and it's about 1.5 meters in length, which for a power supply cord is actually quite long. That's pretty good. I quite like the fact that's quite long there. So I still have to investigate what's in here. And we have important information and we have the manual. We have the manual in many different languages. So yeah, this will show you how everything works. So just to summarize what you get when you purchase the Corsair AX1000 Titanium Power Supply, you get the power supply itself and a generous 1.5 meter-ish power cord, which I've managed to tie already. You get the manual, important information that isn't that important, and you get silica gel. You also get Corsair branded Velcro cable ties. Looks to be four in there. And there's regular cable ties in addition to a powered by Corsair sticker and four screws to attach the power supply to a bracket, etc. in your PC case. You also get what I was calling plates before, but they're actually magnetic labels. So all you have to do, in theory, is open this up and there we go. Just sticks on like a magnet. So you can just slide it on easily like that. And you can leave it like that. Finally, we have the cable bag, which has a 24 pin ATX connector, CPU connector, graphics cards connectors, SATA connectors, and peripheral connectors, all the extras. And I would say, generally speaking, that these cables are very good. 
They're all braided. They're all thick. They're all high quality. Certainly, you can buy better cables in the market if you're willing to drop some cash. But as far as included cables go, yeah, absolutely no complaints. These look really good. So I didn't talk about this card earlier on, but it does say silent operation at low to moderate loads. In this mode, the fan will not spin. And it's obviously referring to the zero RPM mode down there. But at this point, I would just like to say thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this overview of the Corsair AX1000 1000 watt titanium power supply with a generous 10 year guarantee. I hope you've enjoyed this video and the discussion surrounding my decision to buy this one. And please stay tuned for my next video where I will be revealing which graphics card I've decided to buy, which one I've selected for this PC build. So please stay tuned for that. If you get any questions, please do leave a comment below. But until next time, take care.